is Galen Lee. Um, I'm so glad that you tuned in today. Um, I am here with Amanda Ann Platt of the Honey Cutters from Asheville, right? I'm not wrong about that? Not wrong. Okay, cool. And uh, Amanda and I met three years ago at least. I mean, definitely. It might least. have been five years ago. No way. Yeah, possible? I suppose. Well, I started touring in the end of 2016, so it was either three okay. or four years ago. Okay. <laughs> Because that was early on, but we I did a show with her called Music City Roots in Nashville, and her band, she had a full band behind her, was just really, really fun and super talented, and I loved all the songs, and so I, we exchanged numbers that night, and then randomly, when I was thinking about who would I want to have as a guest on my show, I was like, well, I'll just send her a text, even though it's been three years, you know, and so she decided to do the show, which is awesome, so here she is. Do you want to explain... A little about your story, I guess, to the audience that might not know who you are. Sure. Um, well, I guess just in general, yeah, I've been um, touring, uh, not so much these past six months, but no. before that, um, for about ten years, and uh, yeah, with my band, the Honey Cutters, um, we have a bunch of albums, and um, most recently we put out a Christmas uh, EP. <laughs> I love year. Christmas music, so that makes me happy. Why not? We were like, let's just do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was pregnant, you know, it was just the time to put out a Christmas EP. And um, then, and now actually we're kind of in the midst of putting out some new, um, some new recordings, which are sort of going to take the shape of an album, but we're putting out two singles. Can they still be singles if there's two of them? I don't know. But yeah, I think, out I think technically they are. If they're like EPs are like three songs or more. Okay. So I yeah. mean, I don't know. No, that makes to like sense. Random I blogs. like that. Yes. I think that works. So yeah, so we're putting out two singles a week from yesterday. Two days ago. Sorry. The 25th. <laughs> Let's just <laughs> Whatever go day. <laughs> Wait, what day? It's the 20th. So you're putting out two singles in, in five, five days. days. Okay, cool. That's funny. Two singles, five days. Two singles, five days. And then are they things you recorded before quarantine started, or did you do them during? Um, no, during. Uh, okay. Yeah, I actually I went into the studio in May to make some demos and then decided um, to, like, kind of do a more home recording route. So yeah. for one of them, we just took one of the demos that I made in the studio, just me and my guitar, and my husband put some piano on it, and that one is just as it is. And then for the other one... The other two guys in the band recorded their parts from home, and we recorded our stuff here at the house and kind of brought it all together after the fact. Um, okay, that's Just cool. so it's more of like a, yeah, I don't know, it has more of a home, intimate vibe, I think. Yeah, kind of like my live album, because I was like, I'm not about to go into a big studio right now, but I, I think that kind of gave me the inspiration for the next thing I want to do, which is like send out a bass, kind of like what you did. Like you send out the, the, the core of it, and then have other people add stuff. I think that's kind of a neat. Yeah. Then you can get people that you might not have otherwise, even you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. And I think that in this this weird time for everybody, um, but like for we were humanity. saying, you know, right for humanity. But then also like people who are, you know, like musicians and artists who are used to just kind of like, you know, their whole life is like connection and and. You know, it, it's a it's a very weird, different. Everything's flipped upside down, and so I think that I think you know we're all feeling sort of that hunger for like, I don't know, collaboration and yeah, just being able to do things in a more intimate, real way. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> Which is what I love about the having guests on the show because it's people that I like that I wouldn't see face to face otherwise. So it's been really fun. I figured I'd say hi to just so you know. Chris from Liverpool is here. Uh, nice to see you. Roman Bartek from uh, the Manchester area in England. Victoria, I'm glad you guys are all here. It's actually sunny in England, is what they're talking what? about in the chat. Uh, yes. Big I news. I don't it's know about that. <laughs> I know. I know. Their version of like sunny, though, might be partly cloudy to me. I'm not sure. But Wait, isn't it like 7 p.m. there? Oh, yeah, eight, give, it's 8 p.m. there. Wait, it, well, it must have been nice earlier today is what they're saying. Oh, okay. It was a lovely sunny day. Fair enough. Um, fair enough. So, it, who, uh, yeah, I imagine it's got to get dark now. Good point. <laughs> scientist. She's a scientist as well as a musician. Um, so I was thinking I could have you start off with a song, but first I wanted to know where is the Honeycutter's name from? Like, what is that about? Um, 
So <laughs> I was actually just over there recently. So before I went to do a music full time, I taught at a horse barn in Western North Carolina. Um, and there was a, uh, a business across the street called the Honeycutt Wrecking Company. It was just a garage. And we used to be called the Bee's Knees. That was the first band name. Okay, that's and cute. Then, yeah, it's cute. But then, um, I don't know. Actually, I probably would have stayed the Bee's Knees forever. But um, my co-founder of the band, who's no longer in the band, but he was like, you know, no, we got to change it up. And uh, I don't know. The Honeycutters just kind of emerged out of the Honeycutt Wrecking Company. We didn't want to, like... First, we were like, let's, let's be the Honeycutt Wrecking Company. And then we were like, well, that would be like a direct copyright so, infringement. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. No, that makes sense. I had a friend as a joke who started a cover band called U.S. Bank Stadium. Um, <laughs> and then they got a, le- a cease and desist order, like, pretty quick. They were like, yeah. nope, you can't do that. That's our copyrighted name. So apparently <laughs> they actually care about that stuff. Well, I'm excited to have you play. Um, people in the audience, let me know. If you're able to do the captions, uh, they should be available. We're trying to get them to sync up better. YouTube is like actually not great for that. Uh, like technology is not super user friendly, but hopefully it's working better this week. Um, I want people who are deaf uh, being able to hear. So yeah, I'm glad people are here. Nice to see everybody who's on. Um, t- and then after you play, Tina has a question for you specifically, Amanda. So. Okay. What's the first song you're going to do for us? Um, well, I thought I'd start with one of those singles that we're going to release. Um, it's called Desert Flowers, and it's actually it's a song that I've written since the whole quarantine thing started. Just kind of about missing being on the road. Well, yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave the screen and let you play. I'll be back when you're done. Okay. Yeah. 
Yay, that was so awesome. Thank you. Um, so people are saying she's so great. Good Aww. cooking kitchen music. Love it. She's so good. So beautiful. I'm in the kitchen too. The one about the line about losing one's mind in the summer is so apt. Yeah, no kidding. I was thinking that too. I was like, oh, that's like everybody this summer. Yeah. And it's so weird because it's everyone all around the world. It's like right. it's so different than anything I've experienced. Is like all of us are going through this weird collective trauma. Yeah. Weird, weird. It's occurred to me because I'll be like, I'll like miss somewhere that we've toured. Um, you know, I'll be like, oh wow, I wonder how things are in like, you know. Flagstaff, Arizona, and then I'm like, oh, it's the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, everybody's just trying to hang on. Uh, Chris from Liverpool says, fabulous guitar and singing, very nice timing and spaces. I mean, yeah, you can tell you've been doing it a long time because it's very, oh. in a good way. Like, I mean, it's... Thank you. You just have a good presence about you. Um, well, so comforting. now we know what kind of food you like to get at Trump Stops. Fried. Hot puppies. And sugar. Okay, yep. <laughs> and coffee. I was, I was going to say, I was, that does bring you back, like, it'd be interesting to hear more artists' songs about touring because it is such a uniquely weird, like, I, the, the only other person that I knew besides musicians that kind of understood what that life was like was my uncle. He's an over-the-road truck driver. I was going to say, truck drivers. <laughs> I know, and, and, like, and it was weird because when we started touring, he started calling more often and just, like, chatting it up because he has no one to share that with either, you know what I mean? Like, the weird experience of, like, just driving and driving and, and like, scoping up. Like, have you ever been, like, in one of those places where you're, like, at a Love's truck stop and you just go, like, on a shopping spree or you try not to? You're, like, everything's sparkly because you, like, haven't done anything, like, right. fun. Like, yeah. You're I don't like know a, how to a explain. Betty Boop purse with yeah, like the exactly. studs. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't not know. that I've ever bought a Betty Boop purse. No, well, stuff. maybe she has. Who knows? I don't. I I bought a couple weird coffee cups. That's for sure. So yeah. Um. Yeah. I, it's just a fun. It is fun. It's like kind of too bad to think about, except for that. I'm sure it'll happen again. And, right. Yeah. We'll get back to it. It we will, will, will happen again. It's just a yes. very weird long absence. Yeah, and, and I try to think, I mean, at least, I don't know if this has occurred to you, but, like, I, I don't think I realized just how much we've traveled compared to most people, and I feel very grateful for it. Like, I'm like, okay, even if for some weird reason we never get back on the road, which I think we will, it's like, at least we got to have all these really crazy experiences, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, like, right. That was cool to see Just places. to be able to, like, have, yeah, have been so many places and just met so many people. Mm-hmm have a mental reference point for like yeah. when people say they're from this area you like actually know what it's like I, I, I do I'm very grateful for that and, and I'm sure it'll happen again but it was nice it's been kind of like have you been feeding I've been kind of feeding off of those memories when I get kind of down I'm like oh but at least we got to do all that stuff it's like, like yeah. I, I don't know maybe yours was maybe more intentional were you planning to be a musician like I mean, I know that sounds weird, but I won the tiny desk, and it kind of was like, "Oh, here's this totally fake." But you never thought about yeah. doing this. Yeah. And now you really never thing. thought about it at all before the um, tiny desk. I had thought about, you know, because I have a disability, so I knew that traveling would be something I would need help with. So just the year of the tiny desk, like maybe January of that year before I won, mm -hmm. I was talking to my husband about maybe he could take a couple weeks off in the summer and we could do a regional tour for like two weeks. Uh -huh. But because of his full-time job, like the idea of touring for a living really hadn't, like for an actual living yeah. had not occurred to me. Uh, not like, it just didn't seem realistic. So then when we won, that's why we both quit our jobs because we were like, we need to do it together. And so we can't, yeah, we can't like say every vacation day you ever get for the rest of all time is dedicated right. to touring. Yeah. So um, that's why he quit. But yeah. I mean, it's not like it, it it's like, oh, that would be fun. But it just didn't feel like a realistic idea yeah. um, well, until they present, you know, until the opportunity presented itself. Yeah. What about you? Like, what made you decide to go full on? You know what I mean? I always wonder how people get into that as like a instead yeah. of just being local. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think I just like kind of like you, um, I I didn't think it was, I mean, I think for a lot of people, it doesn't seem realistic until yeah. somehow it does, yeah. you know? Um, and, uh, I mean, I think that for me, like, um, I just, I kind of, I started writing songs, playing them out. I, you know, 
just was fortunate to like meet some people who were very motivated because I'm I'm not I'm not a good I'm not motivated <laughs> I mean I'm motivated I want things I'm just not good at like going and getting them like I'm know? gonna do it now that kind right. of thing I'm yeah. like I'm gonna do it now but I'm actually gonna sit on the couch for a while first <laughs> with my guitar um, so you know I was just kind of grateful fortunate and I'm grateful that I just made some friends um, early on not even necessarily people with connections or anything but just people who were like well let's do this like quit your job like let's you know um, and I was just in a place where I had just my rent was super cheap and I was able to oh, kind of cool. take a risk yeah so yeah, I mean you do have to I mean I know it seems weird but we had you know I have health care through I mean with my disability I have health care but we had to buy my husband's but I could see if like if you had a family and you were all of a sudden like, well, now I gotta pay for everybody's healthcare. There's there's things that would make touring really difficult. I don't maybe Absolutely. that's where you're at now too. I don't know. Now you have a kid, right? <laughs> right. Since yeah, I met no. you. We have a one year old now. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, there's definitely that. Like, certainly, if I had already had children, I don't think I would have started. Although a lot of people do, you know. It's they just, do. Yeah. Um. I, I think you know we have we sort of were doing it enough before I had our daughter that like we could still sort of find a way to do it but um but yeah i mean there's certainly like i think for me at least there was sort of a golden window mm -hmm. in my life where i where i could have taken a step out and started touring and and because of just other people around me i did yeah um, so yeah no, that's I know. A totally like pass the baton but i i don't but, know that i would have ever done it by myself well that's cool that you had people pushing it in that I mean, I do think all musicians have people that really, like, support that. Like, I met a guy from Pigface, Martin Atkins, and at the beginning, he was, I mean, he, he didn't say quit your jobs and sell your house and tour, but he did have, like, some advice about it, because it just felt so, like, confusing. Like, well, what do you, how do you do it? You know, and he had written a book about it, and so we would talk on the phone, and, like, I would, it doesn't feel real until you have someone to kind of process it with, at least to me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Well, yeah. so Tina, Tina asks, what made you get into songwriting? Is that something you've been doing since you were a little girl, or is that um, a... In kind of-ish, maybe. Um, I really started doing it... I think I've always, I've always wanted to write. I've always had an impulse to write, and, like, I've always been a journaler. Yeah, And then too. I think when I was about 16 or 17 is when I... Because I never had an instrument that I could accompany myself on. I, I tried to learn guitar, um in high school and I just again like I just wasn't the motivation wasn't there until like I had songs to sing so yep. it had to be kind of a perfect I actually got a banjo when I was I guess 18 17 or 18 and that was um sort of like it was easier to play than the guitar because I had an open G so I didn't have to do anything with my left hand I just had like a oh yeah you know, I had a that chord. makes sense um, and that was kind of my jumping off point you know I wrote a lot of songs in G and then I got a capo and I wrote a lot of songs in other in chords a, that were similar and, to G. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that was kind of, um, but, yeah, I think just through, like, a drive to write creatively and to, I'm too lazy to, like, write a novel or even a short story, so songs are easier. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It's amazing to me when people are like, oh, I just wrote a 400-page book, and you're like, what? Right. I'm I like, mean, how? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where? I, wrote a, I wrote a murder mystery. My parents had a dinner theater growing up. Um, when I was a kid, and they asked me when I was 20, maybe, or 18, to write a murder mystery for them, which I did. I was so proud, but it went, it took, I had to have a notebook to keep track of, like, which characters hadn't drunk the poison, and, like, oh, you know, and, and it was just, yeah. like, I, and it wasn't that long. I mean, like, that's what I mean, is, like, that felt like a huge undertaking, and then you think about people that outline these huge novels, or, like, series of novels, and you're like, yeah. how could you do it? I don't right. know. It's great. It's yeah. just, it's so neat, like, all the different, like, sort of kinds of brain activity that people are good at. Drive on. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. you think about, like, math. Like, I can't do math, you yeah, know. No. Um, but so that's almost the same thing. It's, like, working out all the little intricate details of the story and, like, keeping all of the facts straight and connecting them all. Yeah. You know, it's, like, a very different brain part than, like, just having like some words that mean something to you and like putting them to a melody. <laughs> yeah, well, although we downplay everything we do, I met a violinist who's like a classical violinist and I, at first, you know, like you, you're your own worst cr like critic, right? And so at first they're like, oh, this lady is so much better than me, but then she doesn't write any music 
and she doesn't loop. And so we were, as we're talking, it's like, well, you just kind of have different skills that are like together, yeah, make you you, and there's nothing like worse than or better than. But we do that right. a lot. I mean, I think right. everybody does. Like, yeah, just and it's their it is funny, you know, like with art, how like we can be so quick to be like, oh, well, this person's better than me. Yeah. It's like, well, but it's it's art. So it's like everybody, a different person is going to do something differently and like bring their own perspective and yeah. It's very subjective. Yeah. And, yeah, it, we need all of it. So let's see about another tune. Which one do you want to do next? Um, I'll go ahead and do the other single. Um, oh, yeah. Which is called There May Come a Day. Oh, yeah. I saw that on your page. Um, I put some links to your band camp oh, thank you. and your website in the chat. So at the beginning of the chat, uh, go up there if you want to get some of her music. And it's also in the description of the video. So um, I don't know if or will they be on band camp too i assume that's a good question <laughs> if not your website's in there so at yeah, least go yeah. to her website and you'll be able to find these singles um yeah. i'm gonna leave the screen so you can play here we go okay i think i usually mess this up this is like a song that i never pinned down so <laughs> Quarantine as well. 
No, that's an older one. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. It's one that like, I never did anything with, and it just kind of feels, I don't know, timely right now. For it does. <laughs> I was like, just assumed that that's, you wrote it about that. Wow. Yeah. I love it. Um, Thank you. So is the full band, did they add each part kind of like that to that one, or is that more pared down? That's the one that's just me and my husband on piano. Okay, cool. Um, and then the first one I played, Desert Flowers, that's the full band. Okay, cool. Sorry, I got yeah. that backwards. Somebody okay. asked me, Chris asked me, do you come up with lyrics or melodies first, or do they come together? Usually it's lyrics, but not like a set of lyrics. Like, I just have a lot of random thoughts and lines, and then... Um, I'll sit down with my guitar and like, yeah, sort of. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Where you're like, oh, here's a bunch of snippets. Right. Like yeah. A, then... Like a Trump speech, except for meaningful. <laughs> right. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Uh, but yes, you it's... know what I mean. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I end up with like a snippet song, which is like just all the snippets that I haven't used yet. I'm like, let's just put them all on a song. <laughs> There's a lot. That'll work. No, I know it's hard to build. You do have to like. For me, sometimes I'll be like, well, these are kind of saying different things. Is there a way to bridge them, or do they belong in separate songs? It's kind of hard to tell at first. You just got to experiment, right? Or maybe that's not how you do it, but... No, totally. And then I think uh, maybe you find this, too. It's like sometimes you'll, like, put things together. It feels kind of slapdash. I'm like I'm like a cop-out. I'm like, whatever. I'm just putting them together because they rhyme. And then, like, a few years later, I'll be like, oh... And it makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Way. <laughs> yeah, the way songs change. I mean, you know how that song felt timely, even though it's an older tune. Mm -hmm. I think that happens all the time in music, where you're like, there's a song that I just released on the live album, um, This Hunger Won't Leave. And it really, like, I'm like, weird, I wrote it two months before quarantine. No idea. And then now when I sing it, it's just like, oh, it's about right now. But it's... Yeah. But it wasn't, you know, when yeah. I wrote it. So, I don't know. It's a weird, I weird think world. songs, like, are born and then they, like, sometimes they just, they're born, like, before their moment, you know, but, like, then they kind of move into the sun, if that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> like, well, I think the they, world come, they come from, like, I really do think they come from some other part of the human consciousness or maybe the over consciousness. I mean, I don't think, because don't you ever feel like, I didn't write that song, <laughs> but you're like, but I did. Right. But especially if you write them yeah. all at once. You know, do you ever have a song that just comes out all at once and you're like, yeah. where was, where did that come from? Yeah, like, like that, that was that was sitting somewhere else and done. Exactly. And then it like <laughs> plops down into your yeah. brain. Yeah, no, I totally feel that. I totally feel that. Well, I do want to hear your last song because I eventually should play because I want to make sure the captioner doesn't have to stay on all day. It's funny because I could hang out with you for a long, long time and chat it up. Yeah. Um, well, we'll do that another time. We will. <laughs> and I'm so grateful you decided to do this, though, because um, I feel like it's really fun to mix up my own music with introducing people, the people we met on the road, because I, like, I was trying to think of, like, well, what do I do for the long haul, you know, on these shows, and I was like, well, I had this opportunity to meet a really lot of cool people that are legit amazingly talented, so, like, I should just introduce all those people to, to the audience here, so I'm yeah. so glad that you could do this. Well, I'm so excited to be on. I'm so grateful that you thought of me. I got that text from you, and I was like, I think I, like, signed up for a slot immediately. I was you like, did. okay, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is good that you did, because I didn't expect a lot of people to do it, but I'm signed up through the month of April now. And so, Holy shit, that's awesome. yeah, I know, kind of, <laughs> kind of ridiculous. And so you were like one of the, you were maybe the second person to sign up. And I was like, yes, she's on because totally. I really loved your music. So, oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I've, yeah, I've been a huge fan of yours, too, since we met. And I'm just glad to have a chance to play music again. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. I don't. Well, I hope that the audience will look you up. It's uh, Amanda Ann Platt and the Honeycutters. Um, and she's got new music coming out in five days. And then what is this song? Okay, so this is an older song. Um, I guess it's actually on our last studio album, but um, it's called Birthday Song. And uh, so my birthday just happened. It's the 17th. And my oh, daughter's birthday. birthday is the 18th. So we just had our... <laughs> Wait, somebody asked what your daughter's name is, and I forgot to follow up. Um, her name is Tuvi. Tuvi? Tuvi? That's so cute. Is that, yeah. a, does that mean something? or? It's Estonian. It means, uh, it means dove or pigeon. Oh, on. cool what day it is. <laughs> okay. Wow, that's cool. So you wrote this about the two of you kind well, of? Well, no, or? actually, I wrote this, like, I think I wrote this the day before my 30th birthday, but it's kind of like a, it's a, it's a fall song. It's like a getting, 
being at peace with getting older and with time passing kind of song. So because our birthdays just happened, it feels topical. Yeah, no kidding. Well, I'm excited to hear it. I'm going to leave the screen so you can do your last tune. Here right, we go. This is Amanda you. Ann Platt, everybody. What a timeless song. I love her. Somebody said, I'm so glad she's on the show. I'll continue to listen afterwards. Oh, yay. Um, Thank you. Thank yeah, you, this everybody. is so good. Um, dang, the weather better hold through the weekend. I mean, yeah, what's Minnesota, it like out there? Uh, it's, you I mean, it's, snow yet? <laughs> no. Shush. Be quiet. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, no, it hasn't snowed at all yet. Um, it's actually pretty nice this week, but Minnesota is kind of weird because... Usually at some point in October, because I'm in northern Minnesota, and I'm oh, by yeah. Lake Superior, so it's a lot colder. So sometime in October, there will be flurries, but it shouldn't actually stick to the ground until in November. Oh, okay. But once in a while, like we had an epic blizzard on Halloween night one time where we got three feet of snow in one night. 
Oh my gosh. And then everything shut down, and of course it was winter then from that point forward, basically. Oh, so wow. it better not happen this year. Everybody's like, please, Lord, let it be as nice as it can for as yeah. long as possible. Yeah. Quarantine guys, plus huge winter. It's like, yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, I know. We were going to get a dog, like but a I think Stephen I'm going to wait. King yeah. No, I'm going to wait till March. We're going to get a dog in March. Our dog passed away in June, but oh. we're going to get one in March because. I want to write a book this winter, and I think if I get a puppy, I won't do anything related to that. Oh, I'll just true. play with the puppy. You're going to write a book, though. We are just talking I, about that. I'm so impressed that you're going to write a book. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of scared, but I think it'll be good. But that's why I'm like, if I give myself, I'm taking a sabbatical except for these shows um, from November to March in order to write because um, it's been really, I've been really busy. I know that you said you haven't done a lot of shows, but... For some weird reason, my whole, every network I was ever a part of is like, do a show, and so, That's which is good. Fantastic. But now I'm like, I need time to like, actually focus on something, so. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is your little, your little baby is still sleeping? No, she's awake. <laughs> oh, cute. Well, how, tell her we say hi. I will. Um, Toby, they say hi. I <laughs> know, I was like, oh, does she have red hair, too? She does. She doesn't oh. have very much of it, but it's kind of like. Cute. <laughs> Like the, the puff hair or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. She, oh. has, she has enough hair to have bad hair days. Yep. That's so cute. Oh. <laughs> well, we are really grateful. Everybody said positive vibes from the song. Just loving it. So I'm just really glad that you were a part of this show today. Um, I'm so, so grateful for yeah. having me on, for asking yeah. me and giving me a chance to, to play in front of some new folks. And uh, yeah. it's just so good to connect with you again. Let's yeah, no kidding. Time. Well, let's keep in touch. I mean, whenever the world does resume... Um, we should do a show together. I love Asheville, and I weirdly never ever got like great crowds out there. But I don't. It can I, be I, a weird town, but but yeah, we do okay fun. here because we live here. So you should yeah. come and we'll do a show together. It'll we'll do great. a show. That'd be so fun. I yeah. I mean, I, yeah, Asheville's really pretty though. It's like the Duluth of the East Coast, kind of. Yeah, it's it is. Pretty... Kinda... Yeah, we got mountains. I know oh, you mountains. do. I know Plenty it's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Well, take care of yourself. I know it's a weird year. Good luck. With thank everything. you. Yeah. You too. And Good luck with the book. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's gonna be fun to work on that. It's coming up November. That's the beginning. So I will be awesome. seeing you in the future. Go to Biscuit Head for Paul and I. Get oh take out. yeah. Yeah. Take out. I don't know how you feel about Biscuit Head. It's our favorite restaurant it's in the excellent. country. It's excellent. Yeah. Uh, in the country. Oh wow. I w- yeah. Seriously, we were every time we go. Like one time we were only there for like twenty hours. But I mentioned from the stage. Like, <laughs> you meant biscuit head. <laughs> I, I, you can't the, wait online for 20, 20 hours. <laughs> I know. So I, I said from the stage, like, we're sad because we won't get time to go to biscuit head. And then that night after the show, somebody texted me or emailed me and said, like, I was at the show. Can I bring it to you in the morning in a to-go box? And we were like, what? Because we were, like, preparing to leave without having biscuit head. And then we got to have some. It was like the coolest thing ever. So It's like stealing yourself mentally I, and emotionally. I know. I was, it was so great. And I was like, this is the best human being in the world. So That's anyways, awesome. it was great. So it's take a great care. story. Yes. Uh, see you in the future, okay? All right. Thank Thanks you so for much. Hanging out. Yeah, see ya. Oh, that was so fun to have her. So I'm going to get set up. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, for those of you who don't know, Amanda, oops, I gotta switch microphones, actually. I didn't think about that. I'm doing it a little different today. I'll let you grab the mic, maybe, while I'm getting this. Doing things a little different. I'm gonna switch microphones. We'll be right there. Uh, get set up. Okay, I think you should be able to hear me. Give me a heads up, a thumbs up. Say yes, we can hear you in the comments if you can hear me. I have never switched mics in the middle of a show before, so I think this will work, but let me know if I'm coming through loud enough. So, um, yay, thank you so much to Amanda for joining me today. That was really fun to see her, to just kind of talk with another artist, uh, see what they're going through during this odd time. Um, 
I'm going to wait for a comment from you to see if you can still hear me um, before I start playing, just to make sure we're all good and that you can hear the violin. Uh, let me know. So just give it a second to catch up with you guys. Um, yeah, well, you'll be able to hear, right? Where are we at? Okay. Check, check, check. What do you think, Polly? Did it work? Oh, okay. Hello. Sorry, guys. I guess I could just get started. So, okay. So this song that I'm going to start with is one that I have never looped before. Um but I think it's gonna work. It's a song that I wrote. Um, thank you for the yeses, I see you now. Um, it's a song that I wrote called Dark to Light and Dark Again. Um, it's a song that I didn't think I could loop and it won't sound like the original because of um, the loop is gonna be a lot different than the guitar part, but I thought I would try it out today just to do something a little bit different. So this is Dark to Light and Dark Again off my 2018 album, uh, learning how to stay. Here we go. Muscles, nerves, and skin and bones. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, I'm gonna start over. Muscles, nerves, and skin and bones. They carry us on a journey home day by day. They sustain us in the end. They betray us, but our bodies, they never fully contain us. Oh, I'm gonna have to look up the words. This is terrible. I'm trying to think. I haven't sung this song in this fashion before. Um, how does it go? Hey, Paul, can you grab me my little song? Poor you guys. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna turn the loop off. Um, really quick. Bodies they never fully contain us. Oh my goodness. This is the worst feeling ever, but I know why it's happening. So what's going on right now is that I have never played it with this accompaniment. And so all of the cues that I usually have are not there. So I'm just going to look it up. Poor you guys. <laughs> um, so anyways, while we're here, to dark, to light, and dark. Again, lyrics for you guys. I can't believe that. That's so silly. Whatever, we're here. It's all good. People are saying it's kind of hard to hear the vocals, but I don't want to. Okay, here it is. I'm going to keep the lyrics with me just in case. Are you ready for this? Dark to light. Okay, I think we're good. Should we try it? Which one is it? It seems to be. Dark to light and dark again. Wait, what's going on, Paul? Is it not working? Okay, cool. So, poor you guys. We are here and it will work. Okay, so here we go. Ready? Muscles, nerves, and skin and bones, they carry us on a journey home day by day. They sustain us in the end. They betray us, but our bodies, 
us They never fully contain us We rise above that matter Which seeks to detain us From the truth, from the love From each other, from above We're everything all at once We need not fear the end when it comes Dark to light and dark again All changing tides until it ends Take it in, don't close your eyes And piece by piece shut your disguise Till your spirit is all that remains Burning brighter than all of your pain Silence may confine you But it will not define who you have been The love you have created When memories have faded will remain Traveling down this winding road The destination is not ours to know Take it in, don't close your eyes And piece by piece shut your disguise Traveling down this winding road The destination is not ours to know But it's shaped by those who guide us Take us in, come beside us For no matter how much we have grown We cannot do it all on our own We cannot do it all on our own We cannot do it all on our own Okay, so... We both lived through that experience. Um, so anyways, sorry, I do not know why the lyrics were fleeting from me. I wrote the song. I sang it about a trillion times, um, but it was not sticking with me today. So poor you guys. That is part of life, I guess. So I'm going to do a song that I won't forget now. And then um, I thought I would do a couple more if we have time. Um, I'm going to let you guys think of an improvisational piece. Well, I do this next song that I will not mess up the lyrics for um, called Watch the World Unfold. This is a piece that I wrote, um, but while I'm playing it, um, it's the time of the day where you can give me an improvisational prompt and I will improv on it. Um, so let me know if you have any themes that you want me to explore sonically um, because I thought that would be a fun way to end. Um, and then if we have time, there's another tune I can end on this week or next week, um, but I can't believe, poor you, I really appreciate you guys sticking out uh, that tune with me because of the lyrics, but too bad. Anyways, it's fun to know, though, that it is loopable, so I will be able to do that one more often um, and thus remember the words. So here we go. This is Watch the World Unfold.
pushing up, pushing up. See the dirt just like a seed, but you're never quite a flower. You feel more just like a weed. Driving through, driving through. You wanna know where you are going, but the windshield's always dirty, and you never get to see. What makes you think that you'll ever get there? What makes you think you deserve to know? Who are you really? Are you so important? Take a look around and watch the world unfold. Watch the world unfold. Watch the world unfold. Need advice, need advice. You have no clue what you're doing. Moral compass it is spinning, an identity unhinged. Where to turn, where to turn? There's so many opinions. And they're all a little different, and the outlook's getting dim. What makes you think that you'll ever get there? What makes you think you deserve to know? Who are you really? Are you so important? Take a look around and watch the world unfold. Watch the world unfold. Watch the world Pushing up, pushing up. See the dirt just like a seed, but you're never quite a flower. Do you feel more just like a weed? There you go. Um, that is Watch the World Unfold, a song that I wrote a few years back um, and felt like singing today for you. Um, I think I'm going to at least have time for this improvisational piece, and then we'll kind of see what we've got left um, for that. Um, I'd love to hear how your week has been going. I, I don't know if you read, but I had a really, really busy week. I had like seven shows in seven days. Um, somehow, it's just like I didn't pay enough attention when I was scheduling myself, I guess. And so this week, I'm hoping to get some time to just be more creative and like play music just for fun or write something um because it's a little less busy this week i do have a show on wednesday night of this week on Bandcamp. they have a new streaming platform um call on Bandcamp, so you can buy the tickets right on my Bandcamp page there's a little link for online shows um unfortunately they don't have captions set up quite yet and so that is the one downfall so i'm going to try to do mostly uh, instrumental pieces, I think, um, to kind of compensate for that. But there are captions on this show, and your support is what is making them possible. Um, if you are able to donate any tips today, um, half of them will go to Amanda, and the other half will help cover captions. Um, and then p uh, Patreon is the other way that um, I am covering things right now, um, just financially like rent and groceries and other things. Um, Patreon is a really cool monthly subscription service um, where, you know, you support my work monthly and it allows me to keep doing what I love, um, but also gives you access to all of my music for free and other special things like personal updates and also, um, like, I think we're going to do like a Zoom session. I did it the other day and it was really fun. So um, just kind of like extra bonuses for being... Uh, on my support team. Somebody said, Galen, will you talk a little more about the song Watch the World Unfold? Um, the idea of the song, or did I have any other inspirations that kind of I based it off of? Um, no, that song um, came to me when I, I'm 
kind of a perfectionist by nature. Um, and I'm real hard on myself. Like, I think everybody is. They're kind of, you're kind of like, tell yourself that you're bad, right? And the idea um, came to me that really you're never going to be perfect. So if you're so focused on your faults, um, you're missing everything that's going on around you. That's sort of what that song is about um, to me, is like not missing out on what's actually happening um, when you focus so much on your shortcomings. Um, you miss the moment. And so that's what that song is about. In terms of the inspiration, I do really have a lot of respect for dandelions. Um, they're the little yellow puffball weeds that people try to exterminate from their yard. Um, but I think they're just really tenacious and their flowers, they are flowers, but we just don't view them that way. And so that's sort of how we view ourselves. So that is some background on Watch the World Unfold. Um, and for the last piece of the day, I am going to do an improvisation, um, kind of based, Victoria said to do one on coming out of a long winter and going into spring, because that's what she is experiencing in Argentina. Well, that's totally the opposite of where we're at in Minnesota, because we're in different hemispheres. And so um, we're about to approach winter. So first of all, Victoria, if you have any advice about how to survive a winter in quarantine, I would love to hear it. Um, but beyond that, the idea of, um, yeah, coming out of a long winter, but also the idea of opposites, like it, like around the world, we are experiencing things in different times, same, same phenomenon, but at opposite times of the year. And I think that's really interesting. So that's what I'm gonna do my improv on, um, and I hope you enjoy it. And then next week I will be back and I have a special guest named Jess Klein. Um, I actually did a couple of tours, well, one full tour with her um, back in 2016. It was like one of my very first tours and she is awesome and I love her and I think you're gonna really enjoy that show. She's such a great songwriter. So um, I'm hoping she'll play my favorite song. I'll have to ask her about it in advance. She wrote a song that I just really love. So um, I am gonna do an improv now. And <laughs> next week, I will remember all the lyrics to every song I sing for you. So here we go.
Okay, so trying to explain that one. Um, that tune started out in the winter, the dark and long notes, um, and then the plucking was representing the thaw, the like melting snow, although I don't know if there's a lot of snow in Argentina, to be honest, but um, that is <laughs> what is here. So the melting, and then um, the notes were spring, and then I reversed the loop, which I don't know if you can tell, but I reversed the loop, and then that became switching, um, you know, opposite side of the world. Um, and then that was going in from active spring to more sedentary winter and thinking about how we're connected even on opposite side of the world, different seasons, we're all experiencing similar phenomenon all over the world. So that is what I was thinking of for this tune. Um, and so I hope that helped. Uh, past the time for you today. Tina says she's been doing crafts while she listens to the show. Um, and Bartek says that Jess was on my show on Sunday when you were painting in the living room. That actually was not Jess, although I can see why you would think that. That was Jerry Small. She's a good friend of mine as well. But Jess is a different songwriter who you haven't met yet, but you will enjoy her for sure. Um, she's really awesome. So I wish I had more time with you today. Um, but unfortunately, um, our time is up, and I promise that I will do, um, I have another song that I still didn't get to this week, um, and so I will do that, and then if I write anything new, or maybe I'll think of another instrumental that I haven't done in a while, I'll play you some music next week after Jess Klein. Um, I so appreciate you being here. Um, thank you for the suggestion, Victoria, for this tune. And I hope that you all have a safe and healthy week. Um, fall is starting, um, you know, but that's okay. Or maybe if for you, spring is starting. And so, Victoria, if you join us next week, you can give us updates on the new life you see around you as we <laughs> descend into winter. So um, I'm grateful for all of you around the world to join me today. Really grateful to Amanda Ann Platt. And I hope to see you all next Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. in England. Um, take care, you guys. Um, I'll just need to do the thing where I shut it off. It only takes a minute. Um, thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next week for sure. We're going to end the broadcast like I said. Easy. Bye, everyone. Love you.